Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, everyone, and welcome to the TaxSlayer.com Gator Bowl, our first game of round number two here in the Bowl Championship Series playoffs from Jacksonville, Florida. It's Kansas State and Texas, a Big 12 rematch between these two rivals and two teams that didn't have to travel too, too far to get here as Kansas State, they played in Shreveport, Louisiana in the Independence Bowl, and then they were able to go right from there down to Jacksonville and Texas. Their opening match was in the Belt Bowl against South Carolina. They took them down. That's in North Carolina, and they were able to come right down here to Jacksonville. It's a short travel, and both of these teams were jam-packed. Not only fans from both schools, students from both schools, but a lot of people from Jacksonville turned out for the game. And you see the, the flyover from some of our armed forces. And we're about set to get underway here. Who will move on to the Elite Eight? The winner of this game will move on to the Elite Eight to play either LSU or Georgia. If LSU wins, they'll get the first pick of that second round bowl game. And people are thinking that LSU will either take the Orange Bowl or more likely pick up the Cotton Bowl, which would be the closest to them. They can't take the Sugar Bowl because that's part of the Final Four this year which it's mean Kansas State would have a very short trip to go to the Orange Bowl or they'd get to go back to Big 12 country and compete in the Cotton Bowl. So either way, we'll see, but that's, that's, uh, we'll get to that when we get to that. LSU might not even win, but we're not talking about LSU, Georgia. Shouldn't even talk about the SEC, and we're talking about these two teams. Both Kansas State and Texas took care of SEC teams easily in their first round games. For Texas, Case McCoy didn't have the greatest of games in the world, only threw for 84 yards, but his defense did enough to keep him in it. Let's see if they can keep him in it here as they go up against Colin Klein in this K-State offense, who put up 35 against Auburn last week, and Colin Klein off to a really nice start with that run. First yard gain. And I'm noticing something. It's kind of interesting. You see the logo up in the top left-hand corner. We'll get to this after this play. They're going to hand the ball off to Hubbard. We have... Uh, the, it's the Tax Slayer Gator Bowl. TaxSlayer.com Gator Bowl. Apparently, the bowl committee didn't get that memo of what their own bowl game is. Klein's going to fumble it in Texas defense for the second week in a row comes up huge. We're telling you that the Texas defense was the ones that played a huge part in allowing Texas to get the win over a very good South Carolina team. That one was recovered by Alex Okafor defensive end and Hookham says yes sir. If I can get to what I was saying really quick TaxSlayer.com Gator Bowl. The center logo says Progressive Gator Bowl, so they must not have gotten their middle field stencil updated. On top of that, the logo, look at the patch on the shoulder. That's the Gator Bowl from like two years ago. What was the sponsor back then? It was uh, Kyoto Mayaloa, I believe it was, or some crazy name like that. It was a Japanese office equipment company. So we got three different spawns. It's the Kyoto Monoloa ProgressiveTaxSlayer.com Gator Bowl. It's a triple threat here in Jacksonville. Three sponsorships. How about it? All right. Well, as we're babbling on about that, the Texas Longhorns are moving, trying to take advantage of the touchdown. They're going to toss that one incomplete. The Texas Longhorns, number eight. Kansas State going up against number 24 in the nation at just 7-5. and five. Texas is trying to continue to pull off the upsets here. Case McCoy will screen it out to his uh, running back, Malcolm Brown. The freshman running back, Malcolm Brown. And that's all he's going to get. So third down and 15. We are sold out here in Jacksonville what is this called now Everbank State Everbank Field Everbank Stadium back in the day it was Alltel but since Alltel went out of business 
Oh, never bang. Hand off to Brown. It's not going to do any good there. And I think for Mac Brown, head coach of the Longhorns, they're thinking, let's just get the field goal. Let's get some points. Let's not risk the throw. Since Case McCoy did not play up to his full potential last week, the kick of 50 yards is nailed by Russ Hucker. But anyway, kick is up, kick is good, and the Longhorns 3-0 here in Kansas State in this Big 12 showdown in Jacksonville. Jacksonville, this game, the Gator Bowl, has just a touch of competition as the Cure Bowl will be happening at 3.30, just a tad down the road there at in uh, Orlando. That's on ESPN2, part of the NIT. Klein. It, oh, fumble? No way, he didn't even have possession. Let's see a replay. Did he even have possession? Maybe I missed it. The catch? Oh, there's no way that's a fumble. He never had possession of the ball. There's got to be a review on that. We have got to see a challenge from Bill Schneider or something. There's no way that's a fumble. We've seen our fair share of controversial calls here in the Bowl Championship Series. I think we just saw another one. Texas gets a second fumble recovery, but there's no way he even had possession. Crazy. Case McCoy to Trey Graham. I'm baffled right now. First and ten for the Longhorns. Take advantage of a missed call. Hand out to Malcolm Brown. Brown will get nine yards on the run. Man, in a big in a game this big, this is the second round. I don't know how you can make a call like that. I mean, that's obvious to anyone that knows football, let alone a pro referee that you got to maintain possession for it to be a called fumble. The fact that they didn't even take the time to review it. We had the technology. Review it. Give it to Brown again. He can't get the first. I mean, second round. Here we are. The stage is getting bigger. The lights are getting brighter. The stadiums are getting bigger. And this is where champions are made. We went from 32 down to 16. Option play fails miserably for the Longhorns. We went from 32 down to 16 so we went from the have nots to the haves and now we'll go after this week from 16 down to 8 and we'll go from the haves to the the true elites the elite eight and then we'll go from the elite eight down to the final four of the warriors and then we'll go down to our final two champions texas will have to settle for a field goal one more time So even though they drive twice, instead of it being 14-0, it's only 6-0 in one K-State touchdown, will result in a lead for the Wildcats, but for Kansas State, they need to stop fumbling the ball. I, the first fumble, yeah. The second one, absolutely cannot fault this team at all. Terrible, terrible call from the referee. You could comment, tell me if I'm wrong or not. But it was just awful. Hand off to Hubbard. He gets tackled. Gain of zero. Second down and ten at the 21-yard line. Give it to Hubbard again. This time, finds the hole, and he's able to get the first down on a little 11-yard scamper. Check it out again. Juke and jive in. And eventually, he was tackled there on the play by Adrian Phillips. The first down and ten. Wildcat formation. No good. We saw Tulsa last week who did really well in the Christmas Bowl doing the Wild Hurricane formation, which is essentially the Wild Cat. You just changed the name. But they did really well with that. Kansas State, they tried. They didn't do well at all. Second down and 14. 
Just under 30 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Klein, incomplete through that into some bad coverage. Texas Longhorns note the uniforms they're wearing. Uh, some of their Nike Pro Combats here, some of their alternates for this game. Trying to change it up a little bit. Helping them so far. Klein will get sacked. Down goes Colin Klein. Now it's Keiston Randall, the senior defensive tackle in there with the sack. But for Klein, not really a rough start for him, but his team just having a little bit of a, a hard time getting everything going right now. It's 4th and 21. Texas with another opportunity. We're really waiting for Case McCoy to really get going. Because as we said last week, didn't even have 100 passing yards and they relied on defense to really get them through. And I think if Texas manages the win here, they go on next week to either Georgia or LSU and we see a sack on McCoy. I don't think you can rest on your morals and just rely on your defense as much as we like to say defense wins championship going up against a Georgia or an LSU. You're going to have to get your offense going without a doubt. Get some points. That was Bo Tillman in on the sack. Defensive line junior. That'll do it. First quarter is over. It's been turnover prone for the Kansas State Wildcats. But Texas, they only lead by six. Brown with the run. Not a bad job by Brown. Really good blocking by his guys, and Brown just jukes out. Taxslayer.com Gator Bowl. Jacksonville, Florida, Everbank Stadium. The second round of the Bowl Championship Series playoffs. Case gives it to... Uh, gives it to uh, Malcolm Brown out of the gun, or out of the pistol, pardon me. But that's not going to be enough, so fourth and three. Into the end zone, it will bounce, and K-State will get it at the 20. So again, the defense helping out Kansas State a little bit. They've already prevented... Texas from having a 14 point lead by holding them two scores after the offense gave up some fumbles and now they're holding it down again waiting for the offense to get going. Klein had plenty of time but he got brought down again by Randall second sack of the day for Keiston Randall. Second and 16 offense right now for K-State who put up 35 against Auburn. Struggling. Klein has nothing. Gets flushed out of the pocket. And lo and behold, he will get sacked once again. Calvin Howell that time got back there and brought him down. Third and 18. Line all day to throw again over the middle picked off another turnover for Colin Klein in this Texas defense out of nowhere they're just destroying offenses they did it against South Carolina they're doing it against Kansas State Blake Gidden the senior safety Wow McCoy will take off. First down and down to the 11. Makes it first and 
Wild Stampede formation. Down to the five. And you saw taking the ball right there was Trey Graham. Sophomore from Waco, Texas. Second and 14. McCoy, option. Pitches it out. And Brown will just get back to the line. It was well defended by Kansas State. Third down and four. Do they dare hold him to a third field goal? End zone overthrown in K-State defense. We want to talk about how impressive the offense is. Or excuse me, the defense is for Texas. How about the Kansas State defense holding Texas, not allowing them to score? And that was the story of the Longhorns game. Going up against South Carolina, brilliant defense, but just Case McCoy continues to have a miserable time on offense. Kick it away to Kansas State, and now for K-State, it should be 21-0 right now instead. Another gift from the defense is keeping the Wildcats in this game. Winner will move on to the Elite Eight to do battle with either LSU or Georgia. Wildcat formation works to perfection that time as they're able to get seven yards on the sweep. Thompson ran it, who had a standout day against Auburn last week. Completely just destroyed that team through the air and on the ground. Hubbard will take it, and Hubbard will lose yards, so taking a while for Hubbard to get going in this ball game. It's going to be a loss of two. And you'd almost think I'm third and five unless you're confident to let Thompson run. I think Klein's going to have to throw it for third and five. They're going to fake it. They got single coverage. Caught. Yes. Inside the 20 yard line. Down to the 18. How about that from Kansas State? Beautiful play action. Fake had single coverage and Klein laid it in there perfectly. Halfback slip screen to Hubbard. And that's a score for the Kansas State Wildcats. What a way for them to answer after their offense had been struggling with two big plays like that. Compliments of quarterback Colin Klein. And K-State with the extra point. They will be just a safety away from a tie game, but they are right back in it as it is. Yes, indeed, the TaxSlayer.com Gator Bowl round number two. And these both of these teams have had a great week here in Florida. They've done a lot of a lot of uh, bowl activity. They've gotten some really neat gifts from the taxslayer.com bowl committee and it's been a really nice uh really nice treat for these teams to be able to enjoy another bowl game another week of vacation texas is already the 2011 belk bowl champions and for uh kansas state they're the independence bowl champions and each team hoping to add another trophy to the 2011 trophy case and case mccoy with that heave I think that might be the most passing yards he's had in all, in all the games combined. I mean, that was one of his best passes he's had in two games. Mike Davis, sophomore from Dallas with the grab, and Davis the leading receiver, leading yard getter, and that would be it because he doesn't lead the team in touchdowns. So, Texas Longhorns. Offense kind of stalling a bit, but now they're back into it with that throw from Case McCoy. 7-5 and five, Texas Longhorns. They are the 2007 National Champions. They won the first ever Bowl Championship Series back in 2007. and They did it in the Final Four with three other SEC teams. Knocked them out of the way. And yeah, You see Hook'em Horns on the sidelines. Texas at 7-5. and five. They may be from a big conference, but they're the ultimate Cinderella team right now. And they're trying to make it all the way. No team with five losses has ever won a national championship. 
So far, the record stands with Arizona when they made their Cinderella run with four losses. Malcolm Brown. Just shy of the first down. He thought maybe he had it. Third down and one. Let's see if they give it to Brown again. They will. No, they won't. McCoy will keep it on the fake. McCoy will run it. Case McCoy down to the 10. Heads up play by Case McCoy to run it there. And now, empty set. End zone. Touchdown, Kansas. Or, er, touchdown, Texas. I am sorry, Longhorn fans. That is a touchdown for the Texas Longhorns. And what a way for them to answer back on that drive. Patrick McNarma. Or no, Jones. What am I reading? I'm reading I'm reading the wide receiver who is Patrick McNarm on the team, but Dominique Jones is the tight end. They shouldn't allow players almost identical positions to have the same number. It's 280. Oh, come on, Texas. And now to kick it back to Kansas State as they increase the lead as Kansas State begin to make their little rally. Up to the 25, and we'll see if Colin Klein wants to wants to try to make a little little run at getting this score with 45 seconds and two timeouts. They're gonna option it. Didn't work at all. Slam down by number 18, Emmanuel Echo, linebacker. Second and 15 now. I think K-State kind of wants to give up on this uh, half. Maybe hold it down and go for one throw. Exactly what they are going to do. They're going to have to take the snap, yeah. So, one last throw for Klein. They just, they do the safe play to get out of the half. That's going to do it here. For the first half in the Tax Slayer, Progressive, Miota, Kyota, uh, bowl, bowl game. Whatever you want to call it, it's Texas 16, the ultimate Cinderella story, and Kansas State 7. Welcome back to the TaxSlayer.com Gator Bowl. It's a Big 12 showdown. The Texas Longhorns and the Kansas State Wildcats in our first second round game of the Bowl Championship Series playoffs. Game tracks will get you going. And just like they did against the South Carolina Gamecocks, it's, well, they're not even going to show us that. It was, it was all about the Texas turnovers. But then it was about the Kansas State defense who's able to hold Texas and not allow them to get any touchdowns until towards the end of the second quarter Kansas State was able to finally answer with a seven on the board but that's where we stand right now and the ultimate Cinderella team Texas trying to move on to the next round Case McCoy will go on the option he'll pitch it back to Malcolm Brown and I'm not so sure that he wouldn't have just had more yards if he kept it himself 11 rushes 60 yards for Brown McCoy, open receiver, and he overthrew him. That's kind of been the story of Case McCoy's season here. Uh, not only this season, but into the BCS playoffs. Third down and five. Big opportunity for K-State if they can get the stop. McCoy tries to run it, and they will get the stop. Kansas State Wildcats. In on the sack. And 
and Texas will have to punt it to the Kansas State offense who will take their first possession in the second half. The defense has given them plenty of opportunities to make a rally on offense. And I think now we're going to get the turnovers or we're at least going to see the dominance of the Texas defense and kind of why Kansas State's been struggling a little bit. Mainly, you see there, big number 91. Let's see it all pop up in just a minute. His numbers, three tackles, two sacks, three tackles for a loss. Just a wonderful day up to this point. First and ten, Klein launching it down the field, open man, and it's going to go incomplete. Second down and ten, play action, fake it, Klein will run it, had an opening. And he'll get it out to the 40. Number 7 will we'll pick up 7 to take it to a 3rd down and 3. Kansas State still trying to get that offense in first gear. Klein throws it. Open man. Yes! Brought in into Longhorn territory. Colin Klein got it up there for Harper. Chris Harper, the wide receiver, the junior from Wichita. That's a Kansas State. First down. Into Longhorn territory now. They're going to go empty set. Klein will run it with plenty of open space, diving forward to the 30-yard line. And you can really take advantage of that in the empty set if you're offensive line does really well because with five wide receivers that forces all the DBs, the linebackers, the corners to drop back. And when you drop back like that, if your offensive line can pick up some key blocks, that leaves your quarterback some wide open space to just take off and that's what Klein did and now they're lined up in the eye. This time they're going to give it to the fullback. Brandon Wilson, or Braden Wilson. Second down and nine, Klein will run it again. Colin Klein, first down and more. And for rushing, Klein has rushed the ball this year. His numbers, not counting last week's game, his regular season numbers. 293 carries, 1,000 yards, and... 26 touchdowns on the ground, so Klein does like to scamper. You wouldn't think so, but looking at him, he looks like your classic in-the-pocket gunslinging quarterback, but he's really not. He, he will scamper when he needs to. Hubbard, this is just a day he wishes he could forget right now. He's really having a hard time with the football, trying to run it. I'd say leave it up to Klein to do the running plays. He was able to get the one touchdown that K-State has, but that was on the halfback slip screen, and they are going to let Klein run it. And he will get just short of the first down. I honestly don't know how on calls like that you can just say third and inches or, or what have you. It'll, I don't know. Just Once he attacked off the yellow line, it almost seems like you're either, you get it. But Eagle Eye Ed Hockley Jr. says, no, sir. He's short, and now they dare put it in the hands of Hubbard. Well, Hubbard is going to take it out of the Wildcat. They're going to fake it. Hubbard will run it. Poor blocking by Kansas State, and Hubbard will get stopped, and his miserable day will continue. They will go for the field goal on fourth and one. And they'll punch it in, so it makes it a six-point game here at the TaxSlayer.com Gator Bowl. We had a couple of, more than a couple of blowouts in the first round matchups and NIT really stole the show in terms of first round games. We knew as soon as these second round games would hit, some more of the even teams would be going at it and we had some close down to the wire games and no more evidence in the first game of the second round here the Gator Bowl, K-State and Texas lighting it up. 
pressure, I think we say this quite a lot, but pressure falls back into the arms of Case McCoy. Even though you have the lead, you want to try to open it up. You let it dwell too close for too long. You're going to let the other team fight their way back into it. Incomplete pass. Knocked away, batted away. On the Kansas State side, number one. Number one in your heart, number one in your soul, I guess. Second down and ten. Malcolm Brown. He's been pretty impressive today. Third down and five, and can the Kansas State defense bail out the K-State offense once again? McCoy will run it. McCoy will go down. So K-State will bail him out one more time. An opportunity for the Kansas State Wildcats. And once again, as was the case with Texas in the game against South Carolina, defense playing well, but the offense just struggling to move the ball. And I don't know whether you put the blame on Case McCoy or not. You know, Garrett Gilbert, the original starting quarterback, they benched him and he later announced he was going to transfer. And Garrett Gilbert wasn't much too productive himself, which is why he got benched for... Case McCoy. Second down and two. Klein will heave it with all he has into single coverage. And it will be knocked away by Gideon. Second down and two. I'd maybe play conservative and just try to pick up that first down. They give it to the fullback. Because they absolutely do not trust Hubbard to run it. And Wilson will get stopped. The running game. I, mean, I think you got to put the blame maybe on. If you're a running back, fullback, what have you. You got to throw some moves in there. And try to make the defense miss. But at the same time, your offensive line really needs to help out. And try to open some gaps up. Can, or Texas, they'll get another opportunity on first and ten. And try to increase that lead. Malcolm Brown will help him out. Gets close to midfield. Malcolm Brown has been the, the bright spot for this Texas Longhorn team so far today. Could possibly be the final play here of the third quarter. McCoy, play action fake. And that was just defense, defense by Kansas State. That was Nigel Malone, the DB, the junior from California with the batted pass and they couldn't get him on the play action fake but we had to the fourth quarter, the Cinderella team, the Texas Longhorns at number 24, trying to upset number 8. Here on this Friday afternoon, K-State and Texas, we are heading down to the wire at the TaxSlayer.com Gator Bowl. Malcolm Brown, if all else fails, give it to Brown. Mac Brown and Malcolm Brown. That They have that whole MB initial thing going on. It's I'm sure. And if you take out the L and the OLM and Malcolm's name, it's MAC. Mac Brown, Mac Brown, I'm telling you. But Mac Brown, Mac Brown Jr. can't get the first. He fails real Mac Brown and Texas will have to punt it. Right now it's a defensive battle and it's who's going to break this one open. Into the end zone we go and as well as the games being more even, of course, it's going to be a little more low scoring when we get to the more even teams as they're just battling for position right now. Texas definitely winning the field 
position battle. K-State trailing by just six. They auction it. Down goes Klein. Who will lose two? Klein, though, re remaining encouraged. He's clapping his hands, saying, we got this, we got this. He believes in his team without a doubt. And that's the definition of a true leader. Hubbard will take the direct snap. And he will race forward to get six yards. So probably his most positive production all day as he has been shut down by the Longhorn defense. Klein will go five wide. Klein will be under pressure. Klein will run it. Colin Klein with the first down. That's a true leader putting the head down and racing to get the first. Keeping the drive alive. This could be the drive that determines the ball game and determines the entire season for two teams. Klein will run it again. Snyder decides, hey, You've been successful on it. Just let you direct snap it. Doesn't work. They'll let Klein throw it. Klein will scramble. Klein will roll around and he will go down. Third down and 24 upcoming. As you see, just way, way too good of a job for Randall in on the tackle. Third and 14, I don't think you can let Colin Klein really run it unless he's feeling confident this has got to be a throwing play. Pressure is on, Klein avoids the sack, you got to get rid of it, oh my gosh, you avoid the sack, but then you hang on to it way too long. Sack number five for Colin Klein, and K-State will be forced to punt it away once again, 35 points against Auburn 10 points against this Longhorn defense but to be fair this is the same Longhorn defense that only allowed South Carolina to score 13 points in their win over the Gamecock so either oh McCoy fumbled it and it's gonna be recovered by Texas that could have been a potential game changer. Wow. That was K-State's opportunity. Second down and eight. And now the Longhorns. After that, Mac Brown probably told Case McCoy, you take all the time off the clock that you can. We're going to be turning this thing over. We need to leave K-State with the least amount of time possible. All the way down to two. They take the snap out to Malcolm Brown, and Malcolm Brown hits the turf. Brought down the play by, uh, by Ty Zimmerman. So on third and 12, McCoy is hit from behind. Case McCoy goes down on what appeared to be a cornerback blitz. So with a minute 45, K-State will get their opportunity. 70 yards they need to go. A little less than that. Game tracks will show you that it's been a rough day for Colin Klein. An otherwise brilliant quarterback this season. He's had his struggles here today. Five sacks. Mac Brown's defense got on him. In fact, last time Colin Klein played Texas, he threw for his second or his third least amount of yards. He went nine for seventeen for eighty-three yards when he played Texas four weeks ago. And he's struggling again against the Longhorn D. Floats that wouldn't complete. Down to a minute 30. It's a six-point game. All the time in the world, Klein will take off with it. First down into Longhorn territory, and he will slide down for the first. 
at the 38 yard line. The drive is on. Here we go. TaxSlayer.com Gator Bowl. What it throw a VHS in the in the tape player, hit record, get the DVR going. This is coming down to the wire. Another one for ESPN Classics. Second and ten. Klein. Can't find his target incomplete, and that turns it down to a third and ten. One twenty to go. The pressure. Klein avoids one, and Colin Klein will get sacked for the sixth time today. And it was big number 91 for his third sack of the day, unbelievably, for Randall. Wow. This Texas Longhorn defense has once again kept their team in this game. Fourth and 17, and it all comes down to this with only one timeout. If they don't convert, Texas is moving on. And they do convert. There goes Kansas State to the 30-yard line. Wow. The game continues. Travis Tannehill nabbed it, and they're going to get an extra five yards from Texas. That one made me jump right out of my seat. I thought K-State was done for. The clutch play of Colin Klein to Tannehill. First and five. Klein will try to take off. He will go down for the seventh time today. An unbelievable number. Second down, 11. And they spike it. Wow. So you use another play to spike the ball. To save that timeout, so third and 11, and maybe Schneider feels that Colin Klein does better when he's got the pressure up against him. Here comes Klein. Klein will go down. Oh my goodness, another quarterback sack. This is too much. K State, what are you doing? Fourth and 18, and now the season's really on the line. Klein pressured again. Klein will go down. They brought the blitz. What is that, nine sacks, eight sacks, I lost count. The off, either it's really good play for Texas, or just poor play from the offensive line. But for Kansas State, they're going to go home in the second round, and for them, they have nothing more than their offensive line to blame for that miserable performance I'm putting it like it is that was a miserable performance the Texas Longhorns have made it to the Elite Eight for the second time in four tries they've been to the national title game once and won it all they've been to the Elite Eight and now this will be their second trip to the Elite Eight they will do battle with either LSU or Georgia this one it was anybody's ball game it was back and forth the whole way but K-State never once led in the game Kansas State they've got to be disappointed but they are at least Independence Bowl champions they did get a bowl win but this year is not their year and the Cinderella story the seven and five Texas Longhorns are now nine and five Texas Longhorns and they will do battle with either, look at that, four sacks. They will do battle with either LSU or Georgia in the Elite Eight. Where will it be? Will it be in the Cotton Bowl, Texas' backyard? Will it be in the Orange Bowl? That's going to be up to LSU to decide. Unless they lose, then we'll have to wait. In Georgia, depending on what pick they would get, so... Your 2011 TaxSlayer.com Gator Bowl champions of the Texas Longhorns. So, champions of the Belt Bowl, champions of the Gator Bowl, and the Texas Longhorns. Again, the offense, far from perfect. But number 24 in the nation continues to roll on the lowest seeded team to ever win a national championship was number 20, Arizona. They had four losses.
Texas, when they won the national championship in 07, they were at number 19. They had three losses. Can this five-loss team go all the way? Wrap it up with some stats. Colin Klein, kind of ugly numbers. Seven for 13, under 27 yards. He felt the pressure today. With the Longhorns again. This was about as ugly as uh, Case McCoy's performance against South Carolina, and I'm not too sure that you can keep having performances like this and move on. I mean, maybe the defense, maybe defense truly wins championships. Maybe this is a Trent Dilfer, Baltimore Ravens kind of team. Only time will tell, because Case McCoy is not making his case to be MVP at all for this team. And I think defense proved it today that Texas, they're going to have to rely on their defense for rushing. I mean, the one bright spot on the offense right here, Malcolm Brown, 85 yards. He had a brilliant game on the other side. Hubbard, 8 attempts, 16 yards. He did awful today. For receiving, you see there, not too much in the way of the K-State receiving core, and you're not going to see too much in the way of the Texas receiving core either. Here we go, De uh, defense. Let's count this up. Let's count. Right off the bat, Keiston Randall, four sacks. Calvin Howell, three sacks, so that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine sacks. That is absolutely unheard of. Unheard of in sports. I mean, can anyone else tell me a game? Leave it in the comments, whatever. Let me. Has there ever been a game in recent memory with nine sacks? You can't do much. Colin Klein can't do much when their offensive line is struggling that bad. And again, it's a case where you can either blame it on the offensive line or you can look at it on the other side and say, hey, Texas just did really good on defense for K-State. They got to Case McCoy their fair share of times, but that's about it. Comparative stats, it wasn't an offensive game. And many people tend to think Big 12, big offenses. Instead, they put on an SEC kind of defensive show. Total offense. Either team managed to get to 200. Uh, five completions, seven completions total. Two interceptions each. Passing yards. Klein is a little bit better. Third down conversions again. When you have two really good defenses, it's not pretty at all. It was a good game. But it wasn't a pretty game. It was good, just good, hard, smash-mouth kind of football, if you like that kind of thing, old school. Both teams, they did good in the red zone. Can't fault them there. Texas, I know they would have liked to come away with a few more scores, or, or a few more touchdowns rather than field goals, but they'll take it. And on the other side, for Kansas State, same thing for them. Three turnovers, though. That killed them early on. And uh, it didn't look like it come back to affect them that much because Longhorns only got a field goal out of it. But that's still a controversial call to me, that fumble that I truly didn't think he ever had possession. Total yards, time of possession, and the rest is penalties. So that'll do it. We'll take a look at the brackets as the Longhorns, this year's Cinderella team, a controversial choice. At 7-5, and five, when a lot of people felt there were a lot of four-loss teams that deserved to be here. Well, Mac Brown's team is proving, hey, we want to be here. The Texas Longhorns, they've already picked up a win over two-loss South Carolina. And now they pick up a win over two-loss Kansas State. Tell me this five-loss team doesn't deserve to be here. Because I think they're proving right now that they do. And then... After this, they'll take on either Georgia or LSU. If they get past one of those two, I think they've more than proved this team deserves to be here.